Who's here and missed them, so really looking forward to this. We give a big welcome to Conor Mulvihill. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Jesus Christ, that's loud. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was thinking there recently about, you know, how has the, like, the influx of uh, immigrants over the last few years, last two decades, changed Irish culture and background? And uh, the reason that got me thinking was because I was reading a paper for about, from about 15 years ago, and it was about how, you know, children have assimilated, foreign children have assimilated to schools in Ireland. And the title of it was, Ugly Irish Children Bully Lithuanians for Being Beautiful. <laughs> so basically, if you're Irish, if, you, if you're in a school in Ireland, and if you don't look like you're the product of incest, or if you don't look like a badly carved potato, you're vulnerable to being bullied, basically. This is how it is. But has anyone ever committed accidental racism before? Well, that's pretty uh, comforting. Uh, but uh, I, I remember I did it once before. Uh, I was going for a run in the Phoenix Park, and uh, it was the first time I'd done exercise in ages, so I was really out of shape. I basically had the, the cholesterol of a fried egg. But uh, I, was at, I was at the part of the Phoenix Park that leads into Dublin City, you know that part? And where the gates are? And I met this kind of, uh, this innocent Brazilian couple came over to me and they were just like, I'm oh, sorry, we're, we're lost. We were just in Dublin City. We came in here because we're looking for Dublin City Centre. I'm like, don't worry, I'll tell you where it is. I'm like, okay, what should I say? Okay, what you need to do is you need to go from Phoenix Park back into Dublin City, then take the bridge over to Houston Station, get to Lewis, and then after six stops, you'll be roughly in the area of Dublin City Centre. But the first thing I said was, you need to go back to where you came from. <laughs> And then they ran away. Just like, he's a straight white man. Can't do anything nice without being called racist. That's just how things are. Uh, so has anyone heard that story about, you know, the, uh, the, tw the 12 Thai children that they went missing in a cave and people thought they were dead and then they ended up turning up? That was a great story, wasn't it? It was just like, some we thought they were dead and then suddenly they were alive and this amazing rescue operation. It was really, really great outcome to it. I can't wait to see the, the Hollywood movie version of it with an all white cast. <laughs> I hear Scarlett Johansson's gonna play Tie Boy number five. She has such a range, she's an amazing actor. Actress. And then she'll win the Oscar for the role and then talk about the lack of diversity in actors. Which is really but uh, the thing about it, uh, actually the first time I said that joke, I just had, I had read it down, but my hand was sweating, so I just had young Thai boys on my hand. <laughs> And then it was arrest for human trafficking, so... <laughs> but uh, the thing about Scarlett Johansson, she's always considered like at the forefront of whitewashing in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with that at all. I think she'll be great in her new film. She's going to be the uh, protagonist for a biopic about Oprah Winfrey, so that should be good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, recently, uh, it wasn't recently, about a year ago, I managed to uh, slip a disc in my back. Uh, it was really bad. I was walking around like at a 90 degree angle and I looked like a, you know, a, an evil scientist assistant who was getting paid for it. But I went to a physio and I was just like, can you help me? I'm absolutely fucked. And he's just like, okay, he did a little examination on me. He goes, okay, Grant, you clearly slipped a disc in your back. Uh, what I need you to do is just lie in my doctor's bed there. He's like, Grant. And he goes, okay, what I'm going to do is grab your leg and he put his, my, my leg in between his and he started pushing forwards and backwards. And I'm just like, he's a, kind of the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to put the disc that came out of your back and put it back in, I'm like, that's grand. But the more he started doing it, he started getting really into it, like really sensual. And then I was looking down and I was just like, in, I was basically, there's a middle-aged man dry humping my leg and I'm paying him 60 euros to do it for me. <laughs> And he's like doing like out of cock or spanning. He was really getting into it. And I'm just like, what do we do? Do I do we give him eye contact? Do I tell him how great he's doing? What's the protocol for this? And then after a while, I was kind of getting into it myself because my back started feeling better. And then uh, just suddenly he stopped, and I was a bit I was a bit disappointed. I thought he would last longer. Uh, but when I did finally finish, uh, you know, I had to, he just kind of kicked me out like suddenly, and he didn't even buy me breakfast afterwards. Uh, Let's go. Fucking man. Uh, where am I next? Uh, okay. So, uh, recently I was at a bit of a career crossroads. Uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself in my life. You know, I, I was, wasn't really happy with the job I was in. 
I was thinking about possibly, you know, uh, being a social media influencer, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but in my case, instead of creating content and media, or content and videos, I just send threatening letters to hotel managers and their staff to give me free shit or give them bad reviews. <laughs> and then I thought a great job for me is like, have you ever watched that show To Catch a Predator before? No, no. Basically, it's a show with a, a reporter called Chris Hansen, and what they do is, it's in America, and what they do is they use a decoy to lure a pedophile or, or a sexual offender <laughs> into a house. And uh, I, I was thinking to myself, I would make an amazing 13 year old child decoy. <laughs> Uh, so I was thinking I would do something around the lines of, you know, the, the pedophile would come into the house and I'd be there just like shouting down, I'm just getting out of the shower, make yourself at home! I'll meet you in the jacuzzi! And then Chris hands and thumbs, okay, you're fucked now. But you know, after a long day, you know, I'd come home, I'd put my gigantic lolly down, I'd take off my hat with propeller on it, and then I'd have a cigar and it was really satisfying while I'm wearing my, you know, 19th century uh, child status suit. Uh, so uh, recently I went for a driving test and uh, I did the 12 lessons but I was still really, really nervous. I was like, oh, sure things won't be too bad. But then I saw the driving tester and he looked like a fucking grizzled old war veteran. veteran. Like he looked like he'd done or seen some serious shit in his life. Like he had his three previous wives were buried in his rose garden. Uh, but anyway, I went to the test and he went we checked the car, checked the inside, everything was grand, and then we drove off. And then about five minutes into it, I don't know if I hit it accidentally or there was something wrong with the car, but the back wiper kept on going and I didn't know how to stop it because of nerves. It was like fucking nails to a chalkboard. And look, maybe he won't notice it, maybe he just, maybe he doesn't see it. And then I just kind of curved to the right and he's looking at me and just would say, you know you've already fucking failed, don't you? But then in the end, despite all odds, I still managed to fail, so that was great. Okay, thanks for having me. I'm Connor. Thanks a lot. Hey!